Hello and welcome to another lap guide for the iRacing Camel GT series. This week we're at Brands Hatch. Here's the lap first. Okay, so left time there's a 110.331. We have morning weather this week, and I accidentally launched this with the dynamic weather setting from the uh, practice session, and so it's a little cooler than what I was testing with initially uh, yesterday when I was doing some practice. And so a um, couple of things to note about the setup, about the, uh, the track, is that I was practicing with a 10 wing, so a lot of downforce in the setup, uh, just to be aggressive and to get good consistent laps in. So I think that as I get a little bit more comfortable, I might uh, experiment with just running a little less, a little less downforce, less wing, and maybe even potentially uh, lowering the rear end a little bit, uh, depending on how comfortable I am with doing that. So those are some things to consider doing with the setup, and depending on you know how comfortable you are, com comfortable you are, with the different levels of downforce that. Um, that you might encounter. So let's go back to the start of the lap in more detail now, turn by turn. All right, so coming down into Paddock Hill, uh, turn one, my threshold for braking is right at about the 50. Um, it's probably about a, I don't know, 30% or so braking, getting the car all the way up to the left here, and then downshifting into fourth gear. Um, you really want to make sure that you get the car as close to the curbing here to the right as you can without touching it to avoid unsettling the car and to make sure that as you reach that curbing you can start to get to throttle and you're going to commit to full throttle pretty quickly all the way down the hill here. Now as you're coming down uh, the left hand side here you can drop a tire off into the gravel uh, a bit there without an off track. I try to avoid that, avoid doing that. Uh, in this case I did get off into the gravel a bit but um, it is relatively safe uh, going in a straight line here and uh, coming down into uh, Druids turn two. So for turn two, actually let's play this back at speed before we go into turn two. So com coming into Druids, my breaking point threshold is just before the 50. And so you'll see uh, a maximum breaking of about 70% or so right before that. Uh, if you break a little later than that, it can be difficult to get turned in in time. And you might find yourself carrying just too much speed into the corner and uh, maybe even spinning it on corner entry. So I get the initial hard braking done early there, start to uh, ease off. Then I'll be getting down into first gear for this corner. This is the only first gear corner that I'm using with this particular setup and uh, making sure not to turn in too soon. Uh, I want to kind of aim for a little bit of a later apex. Uh, I'll use a little bit of this curbing and I like to avoid t using too much of it just uh, to try to keep grip levels up and not uh, run too tight of a line there. Uh, getting on throttle just uh, as the car is leaving the curbing here. And then again, because it's in first gear with a lot of turning, there's going to be some patience here rolling on throttle, opening up steering, uh, aiming toward the left, and now uh, getting back to throttle. Um, now you can use this surface and you can come all the way up onto that without an off track, but I find that it was better for me to avoid running too wide here because you really have very little time to get back over to the right hand side here setting up for turn three and so uh, i like to uh, 
to keep it uh, from running too wide there and getting back over right away. So let's go ahead and play turn two through real quick. <laughs> All right, so turn three, Graham Hill. Uh, you really just want to get as close to the grass here as you can. And again, you can you can actually get up over onto this uh, kind of reinforced surface here in the grass, but it will unsettle the car enough that it can make your turn in point kind of tricky. So I actually try to avoid using that and just get uh, real close to this white line here instead. Shifting down into second, um, Threshold break point for me is probably about 50% just before this reinforced surface here to the right. And then uh, uh, down into second and then turning in. Um, again, you can you can actually come up over this curbing without an off track. But uh, again, keeping it smooth and trying to keep the car settled and, uh, and also improved grip levels. I try to just uh, come real close to the curbing here to the left and actually not even using any of it in this particular lap. So you don't necessarily need to use any of that to, to get a quick lap through here. The point is, as you come off this corner, you're going to run wide way up onto the reinforced surface here. And you're going to use all of that, making sure to get back to the racing surface just as it ends. You can see that you can, can actually clip a little bit of the grass here, exiting that onto the racing surface without an off track. So let's go ahead and play that through. All right, so turn four, Surtees. I like to wait and break until you can see the kind of the angle of the road start to come back in a little bit here. Keeping the car all the way up to the white line, then you'll see about a 50 to 60% break at that point, and then downshift into second. But being patient on turn in, you want to late apex this. Uh, the apex that you're looking for is the elbow in the curbing right about here. And so you want to make sure that as you get the car angled in that you're not going to apex too soon because this is a very awkward angle in the curbing to hit. You want to come in after that but as close to the curbing as you can. You can see that's also where I'll begin to roll on throttle right at about that apex in second gear here and then let the car track all the way out wide and then shifting up into third as I reach the curbing here or just soon after that. So let's play that one through. All right, so coming down to uh, turn five, Hawthorns. So for Hawthorns, um, tried a couple of different things here with this corner. You can actually keep the car in fifth gear all the way through this corner, and in cooler weather, you probably just would. Um, I like to get the car down into fourth gear for turn six, the following corner here, uh, just because I don't like to be <clears throat> downshifting and unsettling the car, balance of the car too much into turn six because there was a little bit more risk there. And so what I ended up doing was shifting down into fourth a little earlier, which was about midway through this corner here, just going into fourth. And uh, the way they have the gearing set up is that uh, this helps get the car off this corner quickly. Uh, just in case you maybe you miss your apex a little bit, if you're down into fourth, you're not gonna kind of bog down too much on speed and so, I've started just uh, shifting down into fourth here in the middle of this corner, maybe even a little sooner um, if you can. But um, I think what I intended to do was to downshift into fourth right here. And I missed the timing of it just slightly with my throttle and, it's, it, and it stayed in fifth. And then I just uh, downshift into fourth a little later. So I actually would have downshifted into fourth just a little sooner here, maybe right about that point right there. And so... That was just a uh, little bit of a timing issue there. But as far as braking and turning in to this corner, uh, braking threshold is going to be just past the 50. So it's going to be just kind of a light 30% uh, maybe or so right here, just as I'm kind of turning in, maybe right at about the point where, again, the, the angle of the road comes back inward, 30% brake, uh, drop it down into fourth get back on throttle right away. And what you want to do here with in, in Hawthorns is you don't want to apex too soon. Uh, if any anything, just kind of keep your line as wide as you can. And uh, if you apex over into the, the curbing here to the right, just make sure it's, um, I don't know, past the the midpoint here, right at about where, where I'm pointing to here. Make sure you're apexing right at about there. 
to make sure that um, you're not going to be angled into an awkward line that will uh, take you off into the grass because the most common mistake that will happen here is that if you, you apex too soon, you carry too much speed into the corner as well, that uh, you're going to be off into this grass and you're going to find yourself having to lift and also um, you know, running off and, and then easing the car back onto the, to the racing service as you've come off into the grass to avoid spinning here and so that's the main thing you want to avoid is that on the exit you don't want to run wide and so not ap not apexing too soon can help with that um, but also um, making sure you're just not quite carrying too much speed into the corner so that you can get the car over as close to this curbing as you can and you can see there's my throttle point right there as i'm getting back into uh, full throttle pretty quickly off the corner and then carrying speed all the way down. So let's play that through. All right, so turn six, what, turn six is Westfield. So it's going to be kind of a, a, a quick 40% or so break. I don't downshift. I keep it into fourth gear here. And then turning in. And you can actually use uh, some of the grass here on the right. Uh, this is real close to an off track right here. Uh, I found that when I was making uh, running laps with race fuel that I wasn't nearly as as aggressive with this line as I am with qualifying fuel in this particular example. And um, you can't carry quite as much speed through here with race fuel. And so I, I was really running just closer to just some of the curbing here, some of the red and white curbing. But with qualifying fuel, I tend to try to carry more speed through here and kind of cut through here a little bit more. Um, and like I say, that is real close to a 1x right there. That's right up there on the limit. But if you're kind of aiming to use all of this reinforced surface here, then you should be okay. Uh, the car can become a little uh, un 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 uh, unstable there as you kind of come across the curbing and it bounces around a little bit. So you don't want to unsettle it too much there. So you really want to be smooth getting back onto throttle as you come off the curbing here to make sure that um, you've got grip as you commit to throttle. And then you can let the car run all the way out onto the uh, uh, the surface here to the left again. And you can see I actually clipped the grass just a little bit on the exit. And again, there's no off track for that. So really just trying to maximize my speed through turn six. Although that's that can be fairly risky. I don't know that I'd be that aggressive in with race fuel. So let's go ahead and play that through. So into turn seven, uh, kind of difficult is a, a bit of a blind corner, so you can't quite see your apex as you turn into that. Uh, I'd say your point for beginning to turn in is just before you crest the hill here, or you just, I'm sorry, as you can see the crest of the hill coming up into your vision, you're starting to turn in already. And so the mark where you can see my hands kind of turning in here on the wheel is um, just as the gravel ends on the left. So that might be a different, a uh, decent reference point, getting the car all the way to the white line here on the left, turning in where the gravel ends. They're starting to turn the wheel in. And again, you can use all of this uh, extended surface. You can actually get up into the grass a little bit without an off track here, but it's incredibly bumpy up there. I, I definitely wouldn't, I really wouldn't take any more than uh, this uh, kind of reinforced surface here. Um, the car will kind of get push out or wash out wide as it kind of it becomes an off camber corner taking it um, or cutting across like this and so what can happen very quickly is that you'll find the car kind of slide out into the grass here onto the left and you'll actually see that I touch it here briefly coming off the corner as well as so I'm trying to maximize my speed through there but um, in, ge in general I try to avoid getting off into the grass at all there so that was just kind of running up on the limits there and a, a little bit aggressive. So uh, you really want to make sure that as you're coming off the corner, you, you can see, see how the car is very off camber here. You can start to slide a little bit. Um, I'm being pretty cautious on throttle here, not really committing to full throttle until it's uh, straightened up and I know that I can uh, now start to move over to the right. And of course, you've got to set up to make sure that you're getting back to the right right away as quickly as you can coming off this corner. So that's another reason not to run too far right for too long to make sure you can set up for the following corner. So let's play this one through. So 
So for turn eight, Sterling's, uh, you really want to be uh, right up close to the white line. Um, now there is a bit of a dirt section here, uh, part of the grass, and I found myself sometimes using a little bit too much of that. So it's probably better just to focus on the white line instead, because as you get off into the dirt, it can uh, it can definitely hurt your your grip levels as you're turning into the corner. And so try not to use any of the dirt and grass there. Just get up close to the white line to make sure that you can get a nice decisive turn in and that uh, your right rear wheel doesn't slide out on you at all. And of course, as you're turning in here, just kind of aiming for about a midpoint apex here, using a little bit of this curving. You can use more of it than this, but um, if you use more of it, then as you're coming off the corner, then you may find yourself having to delay throttle as you kind of come off pointed to the right a little bit more than you want to be. And so for me, it was just a little bit more consistent and quick to make sure that I was just using a little bit of the curbing here and even looking toward a little bit of a later, maybe a mid, a little bit of I have a late to mid apex and definitely not an early apex as you come across the curbing here to make sure that you can get to throttle just as you come off the curb here and uh, uh, get the car straightened up and then to full throttle by the time you reach the curb to the right. And of course, you can use a little bit of that. I get up on that curbing and then I come back on um, prior to the uh, actually just crossing the grass just a little bit and there's no off track there. And that's also safe to do. So let's play that through. So coming into Clark Curve, the final corner, um, kind of tricky here. And uh, I shift down into third just because uh, I found that there were many cases where I was kind of getting bogged down a little bit in fourth. Um, you could keep it in fourth in cooler weather, I think, uh, if you get a nice kind of a perfect line through here. But uh, just to make sure that I was able to get my speed back up, I drop it down into third here. And you'll see me break, threshold break, right at about where the grass ends here. So there's about a 50% uh, or so break at that point. And getting close to the line here to make sure I've got uh, as much space into the corner, opening this up as much as I can here. And you want to get as close to the curbing here to the right. There's the downshift into third. Trailing off, downshift into third. And you don't want to use uh, any of this curbing if you can help it, just because it will unsettle and it could delay your throttle a little bit. And it could also end up uh, kind of washing out wide here on you and the car can slide out on you. Now, I could have used more of the surface here. I actually uh, left quite a bit here. I found that if I was running a little bit, of, a little bit wide here, the car really starts to understeer quite a bit as you come right up next to the grass here. And as it starts to understeer and you start having to kind of lift a little bit and to avoid getting off into the grass, you lose a lot of speed coming off of this corner. And so just to ensure that I could get off the corner quickly, I actually was slightly uh, conservative here and didn't use all of the surface and just made sure that I could get back to full throttle right away and to, to get the speed of the car back up coming across the off the corner here so you'll see that as I um, come across the uh, the curbing here right about the midpoint getting the throttle and then making sure that I can get to commit to full throttle knowing that as I commit to full throttle right at about this point that I'm further far enough to the right where I'm not going to be in danger of having to lift to avoid coming up into the to the grass and the gravel here so you can really lose a lot of speed here if uh, you find yourself running wide. And as soon as you drop a tire off into the grass here, um, it uh, kind of sucks you in a little bit. And just you just kind of gradually you know, slide up off into the gravel there. So you want to avoid that. So getting it back to full throttle right away is, should be the priority there. Uh, and there's the upshift into fourth. And there's a lap of, there's a lap of Brands Hatch. Hope you found it helpful and talk to you later.